just burping in your ear. I was about to close <laughs> the screen and you came in. Hi, can you hear me at all? Because my mic wasn't working earlier. Um, hi, Bethany. Welcome. Can you hear my mic? I was having trouble earlier, slash now. Ah, perhaps that's the key. Perhaps headphones are the key. Very interesting. Okay, well, since you're here, uh, welcome. You have the room to yourself. What would you like to know? Be it about the teaser trailer I just released, or my upcoming book in general. Ask me anything. The floor is yours. <laughs> What's up? Pardon my, my drinking. All right, uh, so my intent is whack and not sending my messages though, okay. Um, well, what inspired me to write it, uh, I have had um, a bunch of tiny ideas uh, that eventually added up to the idea for this book. These tiny ideas were all kind of quite separate. I had an idea for the um, for the location of the story. And that was inspired by um, a few years ago, every science fiction movie had a space station that was basically a big circle. And, you know, on the inside of the circle, you had civilization and, you know, homes and buildings, and it would go inside the ring. And my first thought was, what if you turn that inside out and the buildings were coming outward from a central point. And that was the uh, inception of the idea for the spark, what I call the spark. And the spark is this giant space station where the last of humanity lives. And if you were to picture a three dimensional asterisk frozen in time, just, you know, just protrusions from a center point, you know, as a big star, basically an asterisk, that's the spark. It's, you know, all these arms kind of coming out and every arm has cityscapes on it. And, uh, and then, you know, I had an idea quite separately for this sort of fantasy planet with all these fantasy creatures. Uh, and then I kind of combined those two together. The planet has rings and the spark uh, revolves around the planet among the rings. And so to answer your second question, the, the cover, as you call it, it's not a cover yet, <laughs> but the image that you see on the uh, teaser trailer of the planet with the rings and the spark, um, that's where all that came from. It's, it's the location of my story. Uh, my favorite character. Um, it's, it's, it's so hard uh, to play favorites. Um, the main protagonist is Migdalia, and she is, is very special to me. But um, the... Uh, Maybe my favorite character might be Faye, who is the psychedelic witch character. She's like this hippie chick with dreadlocks, and she sees auras and uh, can read people and, and has other sort of little magics within her that she's going to discover. Um, but I can't even honestly say that she's my absolute favorite because there's a side character named Harley who is coming up right now in my story, and she is just awesome. She's kicking ass. And uh, her arc, where it's going, might be my favorite arc. So even if she's not my favorite character, she has my favorite arc. It's, it's hard. They're all my children. It's hard to play favorites. Uh, thank you, Bethany, for all your questions. This is awesome. Did you do all the teaser yourself? I did. Uh, the teaser is made up of a bunch of stock photos that I got from fair use websites, uh, Unsplash, Pixabay, etc. I took those photographs and converted them into a sort of cartoon uh, image 
uh, using uh, an app called um, Picasso. Uh, Picasso just is one of those apps that turns your images into cartoons, but it's it's the one that worked the best that I could find. And then I use a completely different app to convert that two-dimensional cartoon image into a sort of three-dimensional animation. And the whole idea there, the reason I did that instead of animating an actual photograph, the reason I turned it into a cartoon first is because it gives it this sort of psychedelic effect. And my book involves uh, psychedelics and hallucinogens and other, uh, you know, consciousness altering drugs and 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 uh, and gadgets, even like sensory def deprivation tanks. I wanted my art on my Instagram and the trailer and all this stuff to sort of be cohesive and share this sort of psychedelic, you know, uh, view. Uh, Jin, hi. Is it Jin or Ginny? Now that I have you here, I. I've actually never asked how to pronounce it. Um, Miss Noble, how are you? I hope you can hear me. We were having some mic issues earlier. Um, Ginny. Okay, Ginny. Thank you. S spelling it phonetically. I appreciate that. Um, the images were great. Th I'm glad you can hear me. Thank you very much for telling me the images were great. I worked really, really hard on it, uh, and it took a long time. And what really... Uh, stressed me out was after I published it, I realized that YouTube has a sound uh, database with fair use music for its creators. I had no idea and I really could have used that. Anyway, um, <laughs> what was the hardest part of writing this? Well, I'm still writing it. I, according to my, um, to my uh, Dabble account, I am about 30% through the writing of the book. I've plotted the entire thing out. Um, the hardest part, honestly, was just getting started and keeping to a schedule. I've gotten a lot better at it now. I'm averaging about 900 words a day, uh, which to me is enormous. If I keep to my schedule, I should be able to finish my first draft by the end of this year, by um, the holidays. But... Um, that's probably the hardest part is just sitting down and getting it done. How long did it take you to write? Still writing it. Yeah, still writing it. I should be done uh, by the uh, by the end of this year, by the holidays. But um, the um, I mean, that's just the first draft. And then I have to do a second draft and then I have to do a professional edit. Um, at the very least, I don't think it will be done, done until summer of next year. And then hopefully I can publish by the holiday season next year. 900 is great, way better than me. Well, I say daily, but honestly, that's more like five days a week. Um, and I'm averaging 900. That does not mean I hit that every single day. And to, to, Put it into even further perspective, if I want to keep to my schedule and finish by the holiday season, I should be averaging 1,200 a day. So if anything, I'm short. Um, but try my best. <laughs> oh, so glad you're here, Ginny. Uh, do you have any questions about the uh, trailer or the book itself, what it's about, whatever? I mean... I had a, a, a Bethany here asking really great questions about the characters as well, which was great. That was a lot of fun. Um, by the way, Bethany, your last name is awesome. Vota. That sounds like, I don't know, like a Viking or something, like uh, some sort of mythological warrior. Hello, Malachi. Uh, am I nervous about publishing... I will be. I'm not yet because I'm still writing. Um, but I know that I will be. I know that once I uh, have gone through the professional edit and gone through some beta readers and some, you know, once I get down to the wire where it's going to be a little while away from, from publishing, I'm probably going to freak out because, uh, I mean, even letting people read what I've written so far is incredibly difficult for me. Uh, I do it because I have to, but it's hard because I don't want 
<laughs> I don't want people to tell me that it sucks. I'm very, very afraid of it actually sucking. So I'm not afraid of publishing yet, but I most definitely will be in the future. I'm still going to do it, but yeah. Ginny, are you self-publishing? I sure as hell am. I am self-publishing this bad boy. Um, and, uh, and the only thing that will change that plan is if some, you know, big mamma jamma backs up a truckload of cash to my house and is like, not only will we publish it for you, but we'll market it. That's the only way. If, if, if some publisher wants to actually market the thing, I'll, I'll go down that route. But, um, otherwise, no, I'm self-publishing. I don't have any merch yet, but I actually do have uh, that on my to-do list right now because my next big project is launching the Patreon. And so when I do that, I will have some merch to give out as free uh, welcome prizes and, and stuff like that. Um, so I will be designing that when the time comes. Uh, but as of right now, I don't have any merch yet. So a very good question. That's coming soon. I think the hardest part is having others read our stuff. I still have issues with that. Yeah, it's it's uh, harrowing, for lack of a better term. Uh, just, I mean, even knowing that it takes a while to read a thing, I'll send out, you know, a chapter to a beta reader and immediately start freaking out. Like, oh my God, they must hate it. They haven't told me that they like it yet. They probably hate it. It sucks. It's terrible. And then they're like, oh my God, it's amazing. And I'm like, mm, I don't buy that. I don't believe you. What's so amazing about it? Come on. <laughs> I I was going to say that I was going to close those windows, but believe it or not, they're actually closed. It's just bright as fuck in here. It's crazy. Um, mm -hmm. it, it, I'm just backlit. That's just how it is. Does your family know you're an author? Yes. Uh, I don't think that my parents fully grasp how serious I am about it this time. I have tried to write a book before and uh, went years without actually finishing it. So um, so I think that they're just waiting to see if I'm actually pulling through this time. My sister, on the other hand, is incredibly supportive and she sees when I'm full of shit and when I'm actually like doing my thing. And she knows that right now I'm doing my thing. Um, so she's she's my biggest cheerleader and my biggest support. Um, yeah, she's she's awesome. My sister's the the boss. Uh, so yes, they know they know. Um, they're just waiting to see if it'll actually go somewhere. <laughs> now, guys. Uh, while I have you here and the mic seems to be working for people with headphones, I'm going to real quick put in a better mic and you, you tell me if you can hear me better or worse. Here goes. All right. Check, check. One, two. Is that better or is that worse? Sound out in the chat. Yodelehihu. Hello, hello. Test, test, one, two. I have a feeling this is worse. Is this worse? Sounds better to you? All right. Good to know. Okay. I think I'll stick to that then. And as far as the vibration, I think what we're hearing is the air conditioning. It's hot as balls outside. So I have a set to auto, but it just it won't shut off. It's just so hot. Sounds about the same to me. All right. Thank you, Bethany. That'll work for me. The same is better than worse. The same is better than worse. Bethany, how did you uh, find my channel? Um, are you following me? I'll have to admit I'm not I'm not uh, sure if you are or not, um, you know, if you're subscribed. And uh, hot here, 91 today. <sighs> Yeah, I'm in Florida, and uh, and I'm Puerto Rican, so you would think that I would be cool with the heat, but I hate I hate it. I hate the muggy, humid heat and the bugs. Oh, the bugs! I hate getting bit by bugs. It's it's my biggest like pet peeve. I I, I despise it. Um, 
I would very much love to move somewhere with a cooler climate and fewer insects. But, you know, the wife is a beach bum. You know, she likes the sun. Uh, we moved to Buffalo, where I'm, I'm from, and uh, she lasted about a winter and a half. Halfway through the second winter, she's like, fuck this. We got to get back to, to Florida. And here I am. South Dakota. Nice. A little, a, you know, a little further north in here. Um, I have my heart set on Colorado myself. I want mountains and forests and lakes and streams. That's my jammy jam. Um, but uh, who knows, right? California. Nice. Oklahoma next month. Pretty, well, I don't, I, that's an interesting change from California to Oklahoma. It's like, well, going from perfect uh, <laughs> from perfect weather to less than. Um, hubby is from Northern Cali. Okay. Moving there. Yes. Go to California. I've never been, but all I ever hear is how perfect the weather is. So enjoy. Well, you're braver than I am, Bethany. You're much braver. <laughs> all right, all right. So yeah, Bethany, what? Uh, how did you find my channel? What? Um, are you a subscriber? Are you enjoying the channel? And and if, what would you like to see on this channel? Because I'm I'm in a bit of a an experimental phase. I want to do some, you know, different videos than what I was doing. I want to cover some different topics and uh, broaden, you know, my range and uh, and my audience. So please feel free to let me know what you would like to see from an author platform such as myself. I envy uh, you guys in Cali, though. But again, I want Colorado. That's what I want. I can't believe how bright the light is behind me. I swear the blinds are, are down. Okay. I have an idea. I'm going to turn on a, a light over here and see if that helps. I've been watching Auto-Tune for a bit. Make some videos as well. I love indie books. They bend rules and feel more authentic. So I pre-ordered and have been following the release. Awesome. Very cool. Very cool. Um, yeah. Indie and self-published. That's going to be me. That's going to be me. Uh, to fill you in a little bit, in case you don't know, uh, it is a. The main plot is a murder mystery. It is set in a sci-fi fantasy futuristic world. Uh, it has an ensemble cast. Each one. Uh, getting uh, their own respective arcs. It tackles things uh, like religion, drug culture, and uh, and even martial arts. Uh, all of these things will be encompassed, all wrapped around a serial killer mystery. Can't go wrong, right? It's good stuff. Let me try. The, uh, have you thought of doing live sprints? I ha I have asked several times, Ginny, on uh, on Instagram if folks would like to see writing sprints and universally it's been a no from people. Uh, as far as my audience on Instagram, nobody wants to see live writing sprints, but if that is something that you guys are actually interested in, please sound off in the comments below, sound off in the chat if you're in here and let me know because I would love to do some of that. Um, it just sounds fun to me. <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward to it. Love anything serial killer. Me too. Me too. If you, if there's a serial killer in the story, I will at least check it out. I'm not saying I'm automatically going to love it because, you know, some stories suck. But if it's got a serial killer in it, I'm checking it out for damn sure. I love that shit. That's my jam. Um, and in writing serial killers, it's very interesting because you have to do a lot of research and going up to the counter at Barnes & Noble with seven different books on the psychology of serial killers and their tactics – it's a little weird. It's a little fishy. Stand by, guys. I'm going to try to do something about the light. Bear with me real quick. It'll just be a minute. I want to see if that helps at all. Okay, so that lights me better on one side. Let me try over here.
I think that looks better. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. Female serial killers are pretty rare. Um, I saw something on AuthorTube about a book um, called Diary of a Serial Killer's Daughter. And that caught my attention. That sounds very intriguing. It reminded me instantly of that movie, Mr. Brooks. I don't know if you've watched it, Ginny, but Mr. Brooks is a really good serial killer movie. It's a good serial killer movie. It's not really good. It has its problems, but uh, but I enjoy a lot of it. And part of the plot is that the daughter sort of knows that the dad is a serial killer and um, and his sickness is sort of infectious and uh, and contagious where she's concerned and she commits a murder of her own. So if you haven't checked it out, Mr. Brooks, pretty cool serial killer movie. Uh, my, my book, Bethany, uh, alternates point of view characters. Uh, the, what I would call the protagonist is Migdalia, and, uh, but uh, there are two other characters that I would consider full protagonists. Each one of them has uh, approximately seven or eight chapters each spread out throughout the book. Um, each, each chapter is told through a different point of view. So depending on whose chapter it is, you'll be getting their point of view. If you've ever read any of the uh, Song of Ice and Fire books, is very similar to that. I, I basically stole <laughs> George R. R. Martin's uh, uh, formula, so to speak. Um, third person limited, different point of views every chapter. When's the book release? So probably next year, probably uh, December of next year, if I can keep to the schedule and get it all done in time. Um, hopefully I will be done with the creation of the novel by uh, late summer of next year. Yeah, Ginny, Mr. Brooks, uh, it stars Kevin Costner and John Hurt, uh, or is it William Hurt? It's William Hurt. And um, it's very interesting because William Hurt plays sort of the, if you're familiar with Dexter, he plays the dark passenger. He plays the voice in the serial killer's head. Um, and so that's a very interesting uh, 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 aspect of the movie that there is a visual representation, a, an actual actor playing the part of this demon, for lack of a better term, that, that is inside the mind of Mr. Brooks making him kill. It's pretty, pretty intense. Yeah, it's a trilogy, Bethany, so I have to do two sequels. And I'm terrified because I know where they're going in general. I have a basic plan for the arc of my trilogy. But knowing that I have uh, 36 chapters in this first book, plus the prologue and epilogue, so 38 total, um, averaging at about 200,000 words, which is a pretty big book, um, I'm worried because sequels tend to be bigger and fuller. And I already know that I'm going to have more point of view characters in the second book. Uh, and I'm sure in the third as well. So I can only imagine how much bigger it's going to be, how much longer it'll take to write. Uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's pretty intimidating, but, uh, nothing worthwhile, uh, you know, comes easy. So. Let's do this shit, right? Going to look for it when we're done here. Cool, cool. Do you plot or are you a pantser? Uh, so, forgive me, I have an itch. Uh, so, I have a video on my channel all about how I, um, I don't like, well, the whole video is not about that, but it's mentioned in the video that I don't actually uh, subscribe to the idea of plotter or pantser. Um, because it's incomplete. There is a third option. Um, and so for me, it comes down to, are you an architect 
or a gardener. An architect is what you would consider a plotter, somebody who plans out every last detail before they sit down to write. The gardener is not quite a pantser. He doesn't just sit down and start writing by the seat of his pants. A gardener knows what he is planting in the ground. He knows what seed he is working with, and he knows what that seed needs to thrive and, and, and does that as he writes. But the end result is always unique because as he writes, he allows for improvisation and for you know the, the spontaneous and whatnot. So um, as a gardener, which is what I think of myself, I have plotted my story, but every chapter I write comes with surprises that I didn't know were coming and they reverberate throughout the uh, plot, throughout the outline, throughout the story, little butterfly effects where Every couple of chapters, I have to go back to my outline and I have to tune it up because new things have been introduced that I wasn't planning on. And now I have to adjust things just slightly so that they maintain a cohesive um, run throughout. So plotter or pantser, neither. I am a gardener. Robert Jordan, each book was longer than the rest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, Ginny, it's the same thing for George Martin. I mean, the the first book in his series of Game of Thrones was huge. And A Clash of Kings was bigger. And A Storm of Swords was bigger. And so and they just keep getting bigger. The fourth book, he had to split up into two books. It became the fourth and fifth book. I mean, sequels just get bigger. <laughs> it's nuts. Well, um, you know, Bethany, it, it, like I said, it's, it's challenging, but, uh, you know, if you, if you put in the work, it can be done. The, the main thing I am, uh, focused on is making sure that each book is a full, complete story. You do not need to pick up the sequel if you don't want to. When you get to the end of my first book, you have read a full and complete story with a full and complete arc for all of its characters. And if you choose to never pick up another one of my books, you are not missing anything. You have gotten a full story. If you do pick up the sequel, you'll get a new story, uh, you know, the next story. Um, so if, if I think that if I focus on that, if I focus on making each individual book a good story complete from beginning, middle to end, it shouldn't be a problem. Um, what made me want to write? So this is kind of um, kind of interesting. Uh, this is one of the things that I, I don't talk about too much because it's a little, eh, let, let's get into it. Um, growing up, I had a, a very big problem with lying. I was <laughs> a compulsive liar. Uh, sometimes folks would ask me a question and I would answer it and immediately think to myself, why did I say that? That's not even remotely true. Like, I, I don't even, I wasn't even gaining anything out of lying. What I figured out later in life is that I was a storyteller. I had stories in my head that I had to get out and, and they weren't coming out because I wasn't writing. So they would spew out of my mouth <laughs> when people would ask me questions about random things. So um, that was the, 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 big, uh, the big hint for me. Once I figured out that, oh, you can't stop lying to people because you're a storyteller who's not telling stories. You need to tell some stories. So then I started writing and, you know, my problems ceased. It's pretty remarkable. <laughs> I like when a series is connected, but each book stands on its own. Yeah, me too. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, if, if I get to the end of a book and it has a cliffhanger, great. That's going to make me want to pick up the last book. But that cliffhanger better come after you have solidified every storyline in that book, uh, which is why I have an epilogue in, in this first book. That is where the cliffhanger will come from. Um, that's where it, it'll make you want to pick up the next book. But even you could choose not to read my epilogue. 
and you have a full and complete story in front of you uh, with nothing missing. So that, that's, that's the plan anyway. Might lose service soon, okay. Uh, if, if you do, we'll be sorry to see you go. You've been great so far, but uh, as long as you're here, let's keep it going. Are you just publishing with Amazon? Going to, uh, I am going to try my darndest for a wide release. I want my book in stores. I don't want it to just be on Amazon. I feel like, obviously, Amazon is, is an incredible uh, resource for us writers, but, uh, but there's a lot of books on Amazon, and I feel like I'm just going to get lost in the uh, in the volume in there. Um, I want to see my book in stores. I will be selling it from my website, obviously, as well. Um, there'll be a digital version as well for you know Kindles and, and and whatnot, and hopefully even an audiobook version. But that's way in my future. I'm I'm not sure about all that yet. But I definitely want a wide release. See, I, I hear that. I hear that you, you don't like the business side. You just want to write. Um, the, the thing that has made me uh, make my peace with that, uh, number one, started with the, um, with the author platform, with the YouTube channel and all this stuff. You know, I, I look at, at the greats like Jenna Moresi who have made this, her career by running a YouTube channel and writing books. And that's what I want to do. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm working in the service industry. I, I, I work at a hotel, you know, I deal with people screaming in my face on a regular basis. And I, I don't like that. I want to get out of that. I don't want to do that anymore. So um, the plan is to, uh, to make this a full fledged career and stand on my own as a self published full-time author. And if I want to do that, I got to be a businessman. I got to figure out all this business stuff. I got to, I got to figure out this YouTube stuff. I got to figure all this shit out and, and do my best at it. So, um, I, I'm not in it for the business. I'm in it for the writing, but if I'm going to be an author, if it's going to be my career, then I got to be about both. I got to be about the writing and I got to be about the business. So, I'm learning all that stuff. What terrifies me is the tax, the, the taxes. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm paranoid as hell about the IRS. <laughs> like I got to make sure that no matter what, I pay my taxes because I've always worked, you know, at a nine to five where you clock in and out and they just take the taxes out of your paycheck. But if I'm self-employed as an author, I have to actively pay taxes <laughs> and I don't know how to do that shit. So We'll get to that. Uh, you know, I'm not making any money off of this yet, so I, I'm not too worried about that right now. But I know that that's one of the things that when I get to it, that that's the part of the business side of things that's going to mess with me is is paying taxes. Like, how, how the hell do you figure that out? Another one is Mercy. Yeah, she's a good one, too. She's a good one, too. So sorry to be losing you, Bethany. Uh, you've been awesome, but I'm glad that you're at the beach. The beach is, is good for many other things besides live streaming. So enjoy the beach. Um, maintain social distancing. Don't go near strangers. Cover your nose and mouth. All that stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah, Ginny. Um, the, uh, the reason I cite Jenna more than others, um, like... Miss Marissa there is because uh, she has uh, Jenna has two Skillshare classes about making it as a self-published author about running an author platform. One is all about building and, and maintaining your author platform. And the other one is on uh, the book release process itself, releasing a book. And I've learned so much from her that uh, I, I just credit her as, as sort of, this, this guidepost because she doesn't just tell you how to write books and she doesn't just tell you how to run your platform and she doesn't just tell you how to format your book. She doesn't just tell you how to edit or how to release. She covers everything. She covers all the bases of being a self-published author. So, but, uh, but Marissa, Miss Marissa is, is also a great uh, resource as well. Yeah, 
Interesting. All right. Uh, yes, she is amazing. Uh, you know, I'm happy to share my Skillshare with you if you'd like, Jenny. Um, I honestly uh, don't use it as much as I did when I first signed up for it. I feel like when I first signed up for it, I searched for everything that interested me. I took all the courses and I haven't actually logged back in in a while. Um, I know that Jenna has a third class coming soon to Skillshare. I don't know what it's going to be on. And I don't know when it's going to be released, but she does have a third class coming. She's mentioned it several times on her channel. So um, if you would like me to share my Skillshare with you, I I'd be happy to. I'll give you my login. You can get in there and uh, just let me know. Send me a, a message on uh, on Instagram or something and I'll, I'll send you the stuff. Um, Fair enough. Fair enough. Let me know if you change your mind. If uh, some time opens up for you, just let me know. Because I signed up for a full year. I, I probably have about six months left on it, give or take. So um, let me know. I don't think I'll be re-upping it. Like I said, I feel like I've gotten as much out of it as I as I wanted to. Not to say that there isn't more to get out of it. I just feel like I'm good. Same thing with Masterclass. I signed up for Masterclass um, and I took... A bunch of the classes that I that I wanted to take. I started with Neil Gaiman. I did Dan Patterson. I, I did a bunch, and now I'm I haven't logged in in a while. So let me know, Jenny. Let me know. Okay. So I've been at this for about an hour. Um, I haven't eaten anything today uh my coffee has been sustaining me thus far and now that's gone so i believe i'm gonna sign off Ginny, thank you very much for coming bethany thank you very much for coming don't be sorry this has been great this has been awesome especially for my first time i don't know what the hell i'm doing on here i'm figuring this shit out i mean look at how terrible my webcam is um <laughs> So just, it's fine. Uh, I want to know. Hmm. Anyway. <laughs> All right, Jenny. I will see you on Instagram. Uh, I'm going to try to do these live streams every Sunday from now on because I tend to have the house to myself for a few hours every Sunday. So uh, if, if I don't do this again during the week, I will do it again next Sunday. I plan on doing it a few times during the week so that I can kind of uh, get the hang of this and, and figure it out. Uh, this webcam is dog shit. I'm going to try to get something better. But until then, catch you guys next time. Ginny, thank you again for coming. Bethany, I know you're gone, but uh, I love you for being the first in here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right, you guys are awesome. Bye. I'm going to go eat.